thanks for coming to the, the session. I'm very happy to present the paper um, here at this conference. Um, so I'm going to present you that paper, this paper entitled The Geography of NGO Activism Towards Multinational Cooperation. And um, I will start by showing you these two pictures. Um, I suppose you're very familiar uh, with uh, the uh, with this these picture or, or you, you've heard um, about them. These are both campaigns by um, uh, NGOs um, that uh, focus on international production uh, and or um, sales. So the one on the left is a campaign um, by Greenpeace uh, focusing on the production uh, of uh, uh, the input used to produce the, the chocolate bar. Um, and the problem here is, uh, is, uh, the, is the way the, the, this input is produced and uh, the fact that uh, it is contained in the final product. And the one on the right uh, is also campaigned by Greenpeace, but we can find, the, of course, uh, uh, similar ones by other NGOs. And this one is uh, concerned with the um, uh, the sales of two firms, the Mammoth and the North Face, and the, um, that uh, are problematic because they contain um, different um, elements that are uh, dangerous for the environment. So why um, am I showing you these pictures? I'm showing you these pictures um, for this reason, because um, academics um, have been recently, and especially since the beginning of the year 2000, very uh, much um, interested in, in getting to know the microeconomics of globalization. And in terms of um, what relates to firms, um, we've made a lot of progress, so now models uh, are very uh, well published and are able to describe with very much precision what firms do, where they produce, um, how they behave. And these models have been complemented with data, uh, very disaggregated data, uh, especially customs data, which um, uh, researcher um, can use. So there's um, another agent that is very much involved um, in uh, globalization um, on which uh, this um, uh, availability of the data and of evidence is not at all um, at the same stage, and this is um, NGOs. So NGOs are another uh, agent that is involved in international trade just because they target firms. Um, at some point, they claim to uh, influence their practices. Uh, so this is what they say. And we, we, we know a little bit, but we don't know much about it. And um, the other thing that they do, besides uh, trying to influence the practices of firms, um, is uh, to, uh, trying to influence the uh, regulation that countries um, put into place. So why do they do this? They do, be, do this because NGOs are um, uh, involved in protecting and preserving resources, mainly um, environmental resources or uh, human resources uh, that are um, used in producing these goods. So an, exa an example um, of the potential importance of these agents um, in shaping trade uh, and, uh, and sales are the recent law, for example, in France here, which is called the Vigilance Law, Devoir de Vigilance, uh, which addresses uh, to firms with more than 50, more than 5,000 employees, sorry. What do we know about these advocacy NGOs who act in international trade? Not very much, uh, especially because we don't have a lot of data. Actually, uh, we don't have a lot of data because there's no mandatory uh, collection of data on these NGOs, on these associations, um, and uh, because also it is complicated to collect data um, on activities that are very different. Okay, so you would have to collect uh, data on activities of, for example, um, service provision okay, by some NGOs who provide health services, who provide um, education services, or you would have to collect data on the campaigns that they uh, firm that the NGOs um, um, publish and uh, on the impact of these um, campaigns. So right now what we have uh, is, um, it, this is not exhaustive of course, but w what we have um, is for example, this paper by, by Koutenier and Ad. So there's this early database on NGO campaigns, um, on some NGO campaigns uh, that allows to uh, study the uh, communication of activists. Um, there are also um, case studies. 
So a lot of case studies. Um, and um, this Harrison and Scores paper is 2010 in the AER is not uh, case studies, but it is the only um, large scale um, um, study that aims at uh, studying the impact of um, activism on the behavior of firms. And they do it and they study it on the, on the wage that um, uh, firms um, that produce textiles uh, do in uh, Indonesia. Um, so what I'm going to present you today, and what I'm presenting you today, um, is um, work on, uh, so it's a whole work program that we have uh, on new data, new data on um, these activists that campaign against multinational firms on production, on production abroad, but also uh, on the uh, sales. So I'm presenting you part of this work program. I'm presenting you today a sort of panorama of activism um, towards firms. And another paper that I am working on is on this second bullet point, um, studies the impact of uh, campaigning on the um, sourcing decision of firms uh, between different um, origin um, countries. So I'm going to show you, so not show you, but just list, explain to you a little bit what, we, what we're working on, what we have, um, because this is really uh, new to have um, almost exhaustive, uh, exhaustive data on what uh, NGOs publish about firms. So we know for the year, for the period 2010, 2015, um, who says uh, what about which firms, basically, if I can summarize it this way. Um, so, so we know which NGO has campaigned about which uh, firm. Um, we know the date. Um, and we know the reason. Okay, the cause of the campaign is summarized by a keyword. Um, and also about the country which we will call here in the rest of the presentation the action country. Okay? It's, the action, it's the country where the damage has um, taken place. Um, so in uh, all we have uh, more than 3,000 NGOs. These um, are, are originated in more than 100 countries, more than 7,000 firms um, are targeted at least once during uh, that period. Um, in 139 countries. So, um, to summarize, we have three different locations that we will use um, specifically in this work. Um, to, to summarize the campaign, we have the country where the uh, NGO um, issues the, the reports, the news. We have the country of the firm, so where the firm is headquartered. And we have the country where the action, uh, the damage has um, taken place. So this is what we do um, in this uh, in this first papers. The first um, the first part of the of the of the paper is uh, devoted to showing regularity, stylized facts, important stylized facts, because these do not exist um, up now. So, for example, on where are the activists? How many um, such activists do we have per country? How are they distributed? Do we have more uniform distribution? Or do we have something that really pretty much um, resembles the, the, the export um, panorama of, of firms? We're a very uh, minority of firms um, export. Um, and then we have a description. I'm going to show you a description about where, uh, where, where NGOs target. And this question of where NGO targets, of course, will lead us to studying the determinants of, um, of the campaigns. The first category is a very straightforward um, fact, actually. It's, um, uh, these are two facts that relate to the distribution of campaigns. Okay? Um, so the first one uh, shows us that the distribution of NGO campaigns is actually um, very uh, skewed. So this is shown, for example, in these figures. So these figures are very straightforward. They just average the number um, of campaigns per year per NGO in each country. Okay, so we see that there's a minority of uh, campaigns, uh, of, of NGOs who campaigns uh, a lot, uh, and the rest campaigns very um, few. And another way to show you the same stylized facts, sorry to go that quickly on these, uh, on these uh, slides, is to express the fact that, in fact, a majority uh, of the campaigns are done by a very um, reduced number of NGOs. 
Okay, so there, there's not a uniform distribution where each NGO would publish the same number of records. Uh, on the contrary, it is, uh, it is very much skewed. Um, we now turn to the second set of, of uh, Stylites facts, and these Stylites facts relate to um, the bilateral connection between the NGO and the firm. Okay, so why does an NGO target a specific um, firm? And here we investigate in particular the fact that an NGO would target either a home firm or uh, a firm that is uh, headquartered in a foreign country. Um, and I'll show you this table. So this table summarizes this internationalization of NGOs, uh, specifically in the second, in the third um, column, where uh, I compute uh, the percent of activists in each country that have at least one campaign um, that includes a foreign firm. So this number seems pretty, um, pretty high. So we see that there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of NGOs. Um, that are, if we can say it like this, internationalized in the sense that they don't target uh, uh, only uh, domestic firms. Another way of uh, investigating this internationalization is in column four, so the percent of foreign campaigns among the NGOs that target abroad, um, how, uh, wh what is the share of campaigns that uh, are directed at foreign firms? And again, here, this is a very uh, high um, number. So now we turn to the second uh, stylized fact that is related to internationalization. And here we see that the picture um, is uh, actually a little bit nuanced with respect to what uh, I just said, because in fact, we realize that for more than three quarters of the campaigns that target foreign firms, well, the action is indeed um, related to something that has been done at home. Okay, um, so I'll show you this number. This is the very last column, so the percent of foreign campaigns with home um, as the action country. Okay, so this, uh, these, this table and these both of these highlight facts um, are the basis of the question that we will um, address in the second part of the paper. And indeed, we're questioning the reason why a specific NGO targets a specific firm, and we're asking whether uh, an NGO um, is interested in targeting a firm that the audience relates, okay? The other possibility would be to think that the NGO, in fact, targets the firm that is related to the largest damage, for example, okay? Uh, completely independently of the, 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 the nationality and of the, of the firm that is um, targeted. So what do, how do we do this? We um, estimate a gravity equation for campaigns. So gravity equations have become the workhorse um, in international trade to study the determinants of trade flows, okay? Um, um, and there are now um, backed up by theory uh, model that describe the determinants in three different uh, terms, if I can summarize it very briefly. There are the characteristics of the source uh, of, the, of the flow, the characteristics of the recipient, and then the characteristics that are bilateral. Okay, so here we're going to be interested in the bilateral connections, whether the bilateral connections do count in explaining the number of campaigns between two locations. Um, to do this, we assume, so I summarize it in just two sentences here, but we assume um, that the NGO faces a discrete choice okay, between different um, targets, and her objective, the objective of the NGO, is to um, maximize her payoff of the campaign. And we assume that this payoff is maximized whenever the audience donates, and the, donate, the audience donates whenever um, she is familiar with what uh, is contained in the campaign. Okay, so this is what this is the micro-founded model that is behind this uh, estimated equation that we have. Um, so this estimated equation uh, is aggregated at the country level right now, um, and so yes, I have to uh, clarify the, the the indices. I is the origin country of the campaign. J is the country of the firm, and K is the country where the damage has taken place. 
Okay, so with this full triadic equation, we have these three countries that are involved and we are able to estimate the importance of bilateral determinants, IJ okay, and IK, in uh, shaping the total, the final number of campaigns. So what the, the determinants we're interested in in this equation um, are the X, I, J, uh, B, uh, just behind the, the, the beta 2 here. We will control, so doing this, we will control for the unilateral factors, so for the uh, elements that uh, are specific to the country of the NGO, okay, the size of the country, and all the other determinants that might explain that a country um, uh, publishes a lot of campaigns from its uh, NGO. And we also, on the other side, uh, control for uh, all the characteristics of the recipient countries, okay, of the target countries, explaining that the country receives a lot of campaigns or is the object of a lot of um, campaigns. Um, just before showing you um, the um, table, the regression table, I'll show you just this, these two tables, these two figures that can illustrate a little what we mean by connections or bilateral, not both of them are bilateral, but the one on the left is. The one on the left illustrates uh, the distance uh, between uh, the country of NGO and uh, the country of the firm. So of course it's not an estimation, so we don't control for uh, for anything else. Uh, we, ex we, we illustrate, we graph the number of campaign received divided by uh, the share of, by the population, by the share of the population. Um, and we graph this on, on distance for the three different countries, um, France, uh, the UK, and uh, Germany. Um, and so a sort of pattern emerges, uh, which we will find uh, confirmed uh, with the regression, uh, which is that a bilateral connection, here showed illustrated by distance, bilateral connections do um, seem to impact uh, the, the flow, if we can say it like this, with a, with a similarity with international trade flows, the flow of campaigns here, uh, of news uh, flowing between a country um, and another one. The second uh, figure is not uh, uh, bilateral, but we aim at, uh, at uh, looking for data that would make it bilateral. Right now, it's just the number of brands that is um, uh, that pertains to each country. So we can compute uh, the number of uh, evaluated brands that each country have, all sectors together, okay? And we just very simply right now, just to illustrate our, our, our issue, uh, graph whether the number of campaigns that is received by a country um, increases, and it's the case, with the number of brands, illustrating a sort of pattern of visibility. Okay, and so this is what we will investigate in the estimations, so whether uh, the target needs to be visible to the audience. Okay, and we will investigate different sort of measures of this visibility. The first one will be really the familiarity that the audience has with the target. Um, okay, so this is the first uh, regression table. We will, I just highlighted two um, numbers that I will comment uh, in this reduced amount of, uh, of time. So just uh, to explain the, the, the table, I, the above variables are the unilateral variable, okay? As you see the size variable, population, GDP, population, and GDP for J. Um, and we're mostly interested in uh, as I said, bilateral variables, okay? Why? Just because in the last three columns we're controlling for the unilateral variables by fixed effects, which is also conformed to, to what is done in um, trade um, gravity equation. So I will focus directly on this number of, um, that is negative, that is the coefficient on distance, uh, on the distance ij, and um, this number shows us that controlling for uh, the unilateral um, determinants of campaigns, well, distance does decrease um, what the number of news that an NGO, that activists publish uh, towards another, towards firms of another country. Okay, so the elasticity is approximately, well, is of uh, 3% for a 10% decrease uh, in 
distance. The second fact, that the second finding that can illustrate approximately the same uh, behavior is the coefficient on the dummy uh, for the home campaigns. So this means uh, that this positive number um, uh, and significant number means that in priority, NGOs will target firms from their own country, okay, from the home country. This is computed, computing uh, having an internal distance, okay, um, so which means that for a given distance, for a given uh, language, for a given the rest of the variables, well, NGOs will prefer to um, target the home firms. And whenever the firm is not home, well, proximate firms or firms in proximate countries will be um, favored uh, when choosing the target. So uh, there remains to me just to, to um, tell you that these estimations are not fully convincing if I don't explain to you how I control for the third country that we have in the database. Okay, so as I told you at the beginning, I have the possibility to identify the three countries, the countries where the NGO is located, but also where the action has taken place. Okay, so here you might tell me, yes, but what if the distance, you know, between the NGO country and the action country is very much correlated with uh, the distance to the firm country. Of course, this might bias our results, so what we do is estimate the same gravity equation for campaigns on the triadic campaigns, okay? The same table, but now I have not only the similarity with the usual gravity equation um, involving two countries, but here an estimation on a set of uh, campaigns involving the whole three countries, okay? Which means a very interesting fact. It means that looking, for example, at this coefficient above here, which is negative of 0 0.205, well, I'm controlling for the action country. So basically, I'm asking the question of whenever two NGOs from different countries, okay, let's say France and Germany, target uh, two firms for an action in a given country, let's say Indonesia, okay, will they tend to target firms from different countries, okay? And the answer is yes, but it, we know it's not due to uh, the distance to the action country. It is really the effect um, of the nationality of the firm, and this effect is still significant and still negative. Okay, the same for uh, the home campaigns. So um, I will summarize and I will get to the, to the end of the presentation. Um, these are the results. So NGOs do select in priority, in priority sorry, home firms. Um, and this result holds when controlling for uh, the distance to the action. Uh, to, um, and this is uh, valid for a given distance, a given size, and given income of the target um, country. And uh, the takeaway so, is that the number of campaigns towards firms in a 10% more removed country uh, decreases by 2%. Uh, NGOs report 30% more on firms from countries sharing their home language. Um, on the domestic firms, on the home firms, I already said it. And something I didn't point to, which is very interesting, um, is that the two coefficients are negative, which means that, in fact, the proximity to the action or to the firm country are substitutes. Okay, so in order to have a successful campaign, so it would mean that I, I can either have, I need one element of proximity, but I can either have it to, from the firm country or from uh, the, the information of the, the place where the action has taken place. The availability of data uh, uh, on NGO was very important for this project and is still important and uh, we are very much working uh, on it. It allows to quantify and it allows to just shed light on, a new, on, on the phenomena of private regulation, which is potentially important in international trade. Thank you. Thank you.